NVIDIA appears to have sold more of their highest-end GPUs than AMD sold GPUs. PSVR 2 details have started to come out. You can have a master face, and we might be getting some Noctua graphics cards. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Walter White. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast so that you can move on with your day. So let's start by talking about NVIDIA's RTX 3090 allegedly outselling all of AMD's RDNA 2-based GPUs. This is after people tabulated what's going on with the Steam hardware survey and found that NVIDIA has outsold AMD by 11 to one on the latest generation of graphics cards and the 3090 alone has a higher market share than the entire RX 6000 series from AMD. So this is pretty intriguing to, to look at. However, let's just take this with obviously as much information as we can before we make a determination as to whether or not AMD's new GPUs are a massive failure. Let's consider a couple of things. Number one, Steam hardware survey is not an indication of anything being sold. In fact, the most popular actual GPU setup on Steam hardware survey is Intel integrated graphics. So that's, let's just uh, hold off there. Number two, this doesn't necessarily mean that AMD isn't selling their GPUs. It could just be that the most people who are getting their hands on GPUs aren't registering them with Steam hardware survey. This could be for many reasons. AMD GPU owners are known to be less likely to engage with anybody in a positive manner. So agreeing to a hardware survey is something that they're likely not going to do. Also, they could be in mining rigs and not necessarily being set up for video games. We also know that AMD GPU owners are less likely to actually make good financial decisions, and so they're probably getting their games from Epic Games or Ubisoft or from the Rockstar launcher rather than getting it from Steam directly. Any of those reasons could help to explain why AMD is not popping up on the Steam hardware survey, even if their cards are selling relatively well. It's really hard to know where things are going. AMD continuing to have record profits regardless of whether or not gamers are picking up their stuff. It's very clear that they are selling out of their products regardless of whether or not people are actually gonna give Gabe Newell all of their information. Let me know what you think of this information that Steam hardware survey is showing that the 3090 is more popular than all of AMD. Do you believe it? Do you think that there's more information needed? Are you one of the salty AMD GPU owners who, you know, wish they could get their hands on a 6900 XT but couldn't? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And we're hearing more about this 3DFX Twitter account that's popped up, which we reported on in a previous episode of Hot News, where I discussed that this is likely fake, this is likely not a real thing, and just there's just more indication that it's not real. Them tweeting a day ahead of when we're supposed to get more information out about this company, they said August 5th, it's August 4th. Anyways, they're saying Janssen Products is proud to announce that 3DFX is returning after 20 years. Janssen Products sounds a little bit like Jensen, don't you think, is a new investment company in San Francisco, acquired the assets of 3DFX Interactive on July 23rd and is currently in the process of trademarking the 3DFX name. Our partners at Janssen will monitor day-to-day -day operations at 3DFX. This is bullcrap. 3DFX is scheduled to return this winter with new graphics cards and will expand into other products relating to smartphones, smart TVs, and sound systems. Listen, if somebody bought, bought it, sure, I could possibly believe that they're gonna get into all of this stuff. But number one, there's no like Janssen's electronics thing going on in, in the United States. It's not in San Francisco. Nobody could find evidence of that company existing. 3DFX has not had its trademarks applied for, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. And it's just, this feels so obvious, but you know, we're giving them the time of day, which is likely what they wanted from this Twitter trolling experience. So, Congratulations, you got our mind share. I'm proud of you. We should all be proud of Sony because they're no longer taking a bath when it comes to their PS5. Bath usually means a loss as far as like financial rewards. I don't know why. I'm sure I could look up the etymology, but I'm not going to. The $500 disc edition of the PS5 no longer selling at a hardware loss and it is now profitable according to a report from Bloomberg. This corroborates earlier reports from Sony directly saying that they were anticipating going profitable with their consoles in July of 2021 
it appears that did happen. They are not exactly profitable on the digital edition, but they're likely going to have that offset at some point in the near future. But Sony also confirming that the chip shortage isn't really a shortage for them and that they have confirmed to acquired all of the chips that they need to produce all of the PS5s that they want to by the end of the year, with them trying to hit the deadline of 22 million units sold by the end of this year, with the CFO of Sony essentially saying, it's not gonna be a problem. We've already put in the orders. We're gonna get these chips. It, they're just, it's just so dang popular. Everybody wants one. It's coming in drips and drabs because you're buying them. If you stopped buying them, they would be on store shelves. That's why there's none. It's physics. And I can't wait for the physics of the PSVR 2 because there's new indications of a developer day that Sony held this past week where PSVR YouTubers have come out and said, listen, these are the specs we're getting. Fresnel OLED screens, heck yes, 2000 by 2040 per eye, 4K HDR displays with a field of view of 110 degrees. Plus on top of that, you got things like FSR coming into the mix. You got foveated rendering, which means that it's gonna watch your eyeballs and then just render out the things that you're actually actually looking at, which is going to improve performance. Also, it's going to have haptic feedback on your face and make it so that the controllers have everything from the haptic feedback, adapt triggers, touch sensitive buttons, and they're gonna be able to sense the distance between your fingers. Now, this isn't just one person reporting on this. This has been corroborated by multiple PSVR YouTubers and people out there who are knowing behind the scenes. I'm excited for this. We're likely only gonna get some more details directly from Sony towards the beginning of 20. 2022. I personally expecting a holiday 2022 launch, which is too far away, but I absolutely want this. I like it would make it so much easier for me to be able to play PlayStation games in bed if I could just slot on a decent VR headset instead of having to take over the TV. My wife could watch The Office. I could lay some smack down on some Midgar punks in Final Fantasy VII. Sony, get this to us as soon as possible. But in order to help my anticipation as I wait, let's just review some crypto stonks. Let's, ow, oh, my leg. Let's see how Bitcoin's doing. Ah, oh, it's up 4.4%, climbing up pretty decently, almost at $40,000, sitting at 39,730 as of the time of recording. Ethereum having a much better time, up nearly 10% to be at 27,11, just looking like it, it, it had its breakfast and then took off. It, it knew, it watched hot news, it had breakfast, Bam, that's the catalyst for a great day right there. Dogecoin also up 3.3% to 20 cents. GameStop, however, not having as good of a day. The meme stonks have just been really awful lately. Like, it's almost like they're not a meme anymore. GameStop down 3.9% to close at 146.80. AMC also down 11% to close below $30 for the first time in quite a while. Meme stonks, what you doing? Get your act together. Like Nissan did, okay? Nissan's getting its act together and trying to get people to buy the leaf please for the love of everything please buy a nissan leaf we're gonna cut the price to below thirty thousand dollars twenty seven thousand four hundred dollars is all you need to pay in order to get an entry level leaf and then if you get the tax credit the federal tax credit seven thousand five hundred dollars you're gonna be under 20 grand for this electric vehicle please oh please just buy it because this, the whole reason they still have the federal tax credit is because nobody bought them because the federal tax credit expires based on volume sales Anyways, 40 kilowatt hour battery to go for uh, around 20 grand after federal tax rebate. 62 kilowatt hour gonna go for around 32 without considering that federal incentive. Not a bad price. I'm mixed about the leaf. It feels like it's not quite ready for everybody to adopt it, hence why they still have the federal tax credit. The pricing is gonna be pretty good if we're just trying to get cheap, you know, around the city adoption of electric vehicles. Nissan appears to be moving forward on that. I don't know, what do you think of the Nissan Leaf and its new pricing structure? Let me know down below in the comments and I will let you know that TikTok now has a stories feature because of course they do. Everybody copy TikTok, now TikTok's copying stories. Amazon copying every other game developer because they're delaying their MMO yet again. New World being delayed from the end of this month until September 28th for them to make some improvements, smash some bugs, improve stability and polish the game, which is code for stop getting GPUs to die. We don't want 3090 owners coming after us. Ah, you don't have to worry about AMD owners because 
they don't exist according to the Steam hardware survey. And T-Mobile thinks that, that Sprint's LTE shouldn't exist because they're gonna be shutting it down by the end of June next year. This is part of the deal where T-Mobile acquired Sprint last year. They announced that they were going to do this. Now they've given us a deadline. You have about a year before Sprint LTE's network gets shut down and you have about 30 seconds before your face becomes replaced with a master face that can unlock your face ID for you because there's a neural network that's developed uh, master faces that can unlock 40% of the population's phones and stuff by using only nine faces. It's wild. Apparently we all look mostly alike that if you use nine faces, you can unlock all of our stuff. So don't use faces if it's biometric authentication. I mean, there's still 60% of the population that should be unscathed, but you could probably, you know, artificially generate a whole bunch of faces in order to make things work. But I just love it. This this guy looks like 16.81% of faces out there. This guy's 17.3%, 17.17%, 23.92. That guy's too happy. He knows, he knows he can unlock a quarter of all faces across the entire world. And Asus and Noctua think that they can unlock your hearts. With Noctua GPUs, there's a new EEC filing indicating that Asus and Noctua are going to be collaborating together in order to bring you out a GPU that is quieter and more efficient and just less hot than everything else in, in a good way because the temperature is going to be cool. Like hot as in temperature! You want to throw it on the stones? EEC filing showing the 3078 gigabyte Noctua edition. We'll wait and see when these are actually going to come out. This has been rumored for a while that Asus and Noctua were looking to team up, and now it looks like we might be getting these GPUs sometime soon. And you might be able to get the fastest GPU to AMD ever made sometime soon by buying it from Apple. Go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talk about their new Duo GPU, so where you can get quad crossfire. Anyways, thanks for watching Hot News over your breakfast, and I'll see you tomorrow for another episode, my friends. Enjoy your Wheaties. Pancakes? Waffles? You eating Cheerios?